Hey everybody, I think this is recording. Hopefully it is. Like the video we posted the other day, Mr. O and I have been learning so much. So it's Monday. Happy Monday. Um, we are today, as you know, starting moving forward with our learning. So up till now, we've been kind of reviewing and checking in with each other, but not doing lessons. So starting today, we're going to do lessons in reading and writing, and math, and maybe some science and social studies. We'll try and roll that in. Um, but Mr. O is going to teach all the math. I'm going to teach all the reading and writing. Sounds good, right? Uh, so today, we're going to talk about reading. And we decided that the best place to talk about, I just dropped something, hold on. The, the best way to teach reading and writing from far away is to talk about where and how do we do those things at home. So today I wanna to talk to you about setting up a reading space at home so that moving forward for the next eight weeks, you have a safe, comfy place that you can focus and read daily, all right? So let's think about this. If we are going to think about reading at home, what do you think we should consider first? Let's see, I'm listening. Oh, I heard somebody say, when? When should we read? What do you guys think? When's a good time to read? When do you like to read? Hmm, I know some of you, I can hear you. Some of you said that you really like to get up and read first thing in the morning. Do you like to do that? Some people do. Some people I hear saying that they like to read in the afternoons maybe even evenings, kind of after dinner, after you've had some time to work on your lessons, you've done your eye ready for the day. Sometimes that's a nice time. Oh, I think I heard someone else say they like to read at bedtime. I love to read at bedtime. The only problem is that I usually fall asleep doing it. So that's a problem. Hmm. All right, so those are times that you could consider reading. Those might be really good times for you to read. What's the next thing we should consider about reading at home? I'm listening. Oh, yeah, where? Where to read? I totally heard you say that. So let's think about that. Where are places at home that you like to read? I like to read in a lot of different places. Did you watch the video? I had the kids take some pictures of me reading over the last couple of days in a few other places that I like to read. All right, some of you I heard say that you like to read in bed. That's always a comfy place to read. It's warm and soft. It's a nice place to read. Where's another good place to read? Hmm, not the last couple days, but today and hopefully moving forward, outside. I totally agree. That's a lovely place to read. You can listen to the birds, maybe put up a hammock, maybe have a porch. It's awesome. What about reading on the couch? Do we have any couch readers out there? I like to read on the couch. Mead likes to read on the couch. She reads on the couch a lot. What about reading at a table? Do you have a kitchen table in your house or a dining room table that you like to read at? That's a fun place to read. I usually read at the dining room table. Um, what about this one? at your desk. Who has a desk? Let's see if I can make it so you can see that. You have a desk? Mac has a desk and you know what? It was a mess and so yesterday we cleaned it off so that he could read there. Maybe today what you could do if you have a desk that maybe is a mess because it's got some toys on it, maybe you could clean it off and make it a reading space today. All right, what else do you think we should consider about being readers at home since we can't do it at school together. We think about when to read, we think about where to read. I'm listening. Who has another idea? Oh, I heard you. What? We need to think about what to read. What do you like to read? What have you been reading for the last five weeks? Hopefully something, right? Um, think about it for a minute. What are things that we can read? Oh, I heard you say that. I heard someone just say fiction. We could read fiction 
short stories, long stories, graphic novels. Yes, totally. We could read fiction. What else? Oh, yep, you're right. We could read nonfiction. That's an amazing thing to read. So many great books. What about reading magazines? Do you have a favorite magazine? When I was in fifth grade, I had a favorite magazine. It was Ranger Rick. It's all about animals. I loved it. And I liked highlights too, because I could find the hidden pictures. Do you guys like those? Um, what about hopping online and reading blogs or posts? Things that people have written about your favorite video games or cooking shows or crafting stuff. Lots of blogs and whatnot out there. So we've talked about when to read. We've talked about where we like to read. We've talked about what we can read. Anyone have a guess what the next place or the next thing we're going to think about is? It's who. And that one's a little trickier because at school, we never had to talk about the who because we knew that we were either reading with each other or you're reading with me or another teacher or Mrs. Ronan. So we never had to talk about who, but now that we're reading from home, we have to think about who we're going to read with or by or to because those are important things. So some of you might be reading with your parents and guardians. That's a good idea. I know Mac and I have been reading every night. We're still on front desk, but we're almost done. Um, some of you have pets that you could read to. Dogs love to be read to. Cats, mm, not so much, at least not my cat. But the fish like to be read to. Mead's been reading to the fish. What about reading to your siblings? especially those of you that have younger siblings, that is a great audience because you know what? Kids love to be read to. And it's one of the best ways to learn how to read is to have someone read to you. So the next couple ones that I thought about, maybe you've thought about, you'd have to do via Zoom. But what about reading to friends? What about if you started a little book club and you could set up a Zoom with your friends and read together? I think that would be amazing. Maybe find a book on Epic, which is a website we're going to be talking about in a minute, um, and read together over Zoom. What about reading to your teachers? I would love you to read to me. So if you want to Zoom with me, just call me, text me, email me, send me a message and say, hey, let's read together, and we will. All right? What about reading to relatives? Grandmas and grandpas are sure lonely lately. They don't get to see you, but you could Zoom with them and you could read to them and that'd be awesome. So here's your assignment for today. Number one, I want you to commit to when you're going to read. I want you to think about where you're going to read. And if it means that you need to clean off a space in your room or clean off a desk or make space somewhere else in your house, I want you to have a safe place that you can read every day that you can focus, which means no devices, no distractions, none of that other stuff. I want you to think about what you can read. Now I know that some of you have lots of books at home and some of you don't. That's okay because there's tons of online resources for books and uh, we will talk about that, but there's obviously there's reading stuff on, on iReady, there's Epic, there are websites, there are blogs, there are so many great resources and we're gonna start collecting some of them um, because whether or not you have books at home, I think you can find things to read. And finally, who? I want you to think about who do you want to read with and who do you want to read to in the weeks coming up because that's going to be super important. Um, so let me click back over here. All right. Um, so I've been thinking about what I was going to read. I've been reading this a lot because lots of birds are coming back. They're migrating and I've been checking in and to see who's at my feeder. You might be surprised, you might not. I revisited my favorite, I reread it again. And if you noticed last week, I put on our stream that Kate DiCamillo is doing a live um, book club, I believe on the 21st on Tuesday, and you could log in and sign up for it. I know there was a limited number of spaces, but you could go back in the stream and find that. I'm gonna do that on Tuesday and I'm pretty excited about it. And as you know, I've also been following Kate's um, 
writing lessons that she's been doing. One of the lessons was to find a journal. And guess what? When she showed her journal, it was the exact same journal that I have, like the exact same one down to the little black strap and everything. And I got really excited. So I've been writing every day. And she said that this was tip number four. Writers also have to be readers. And she recommended a kid's book and she recommended an adult book, which was this one, Gilead. And so I ordered it and I'm going to start reading it tonight. And I haven't decided where, maybe in my hammock, maybe on the couch. I haven't decided yet, but that's your job. Figure out where you're going to read, when you're going to read. We will check in tomorrow on Tuesday on Zoom at 11. And those, that's what I'm going to be asking you is where are you going to read and what are you reading? Whom are you reading with? Um, and I'm posting some information on how to get on Epic. So I want you to do that before we talk on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop recording. I don't know how to stop recording. Let's see. Um, oh, here's stop recording. Okay. Bye guys.